Hi guys, I'm gonna here once again with the Oracle Sunfire X4170 Mark II. And today we've done an overview. Uh, I've had this running for a bit and now I'm gonna be doing some upgrades to it. What, you're gonna be doing upgrades to it already? Well, yeah, I've planned on these since getting the machine anyway because this 1U system is replacing a 4U system that I already had. Um, the reason entirely because this rack is very very small and I need the space so yeah what am I upgrading it with well firstly I'm upgrading the processors currently in here there are E5620s uh, which are quad cores clocked at 2.4 gigahertz with uh, hyper threading so four cores eight threads uh, I'm going to be taking the two processors out of my other virtualization system sticking them in this and these are if we can get it to focus, I know what they are, but I want to show you what they are. Da -da 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 -da. Xeon X5650s, these are 2.66 yeah, gigahertz hexacores. Hexacores, hexacores, whatever you want to call them. Um, so, two extra cores, like core clock. But I'll also be taking this thing up to 96 gigabytes of RAM. How? Using this, uh, if I can get it to focus again. Nanya, that's Nanya, 8 gigabyte dims. I have six of these. So I'll be taking out the four, some of the four gigabyte SID dims. Uh, that will give me uh, 48 gigabytes of RAM, and then I'll use the uh, remaining four gigabytes to take me up to 96. So six, eight gigabyte dims, 12, four gigabyte dims. So, uh, where to begin? I guess I'll start with the processors. I've got my handy dandy tool for Allen keys and I'll be needing the 4mm to undo these bolts to on both processors. When undoing any retention system, and doing it up in fact, make sure you go back and forth so you don't unload the whoop, unload the distribution of the pressure on the processor unevenly and possibly break both the processor, the board or the socket. So now I've got processors, uh, heat sinks off. Weirdly, they got like this dot pattern that was on the pre-applied thermal paste. Very interesting. And also these screws are not captive in any way. So they just come right out. So as you can just about see, most very clear on this one that's upside down, uh, E5620s. Yeah, you can just see it over there. Um, so yeah, to remove LGA socket processors, just like 771, uh, just got to push this retention arm out. It's a bit of an issue because there's this uh, cable in the way, so I'm going to fish that out. And ooh, not like that, you're not supposed to let it spring open, but simply pull back the lever and open the socket. Hey presto! Uh, the newer 2011 socket uh, actually has two retention arms. So, but the same prop, fucking hell. I that's got some spring force behind it. Uh, LGA 2011 actually has two, so you've got to undo the one before you can do the other. Uh, just entirely because it's a much bigger processor. But anyway, now that I've got some done, I can just simply lift them out. There's your 13, well, 1366 pins and your nomenclature. So I'll just stick them over here for now. Then grab our updated processors and stick some in here, just like that. This one goes flippity floppy the opposite way. There, just in case you were wondering, there's a little gold triangle here. Oh, come on, focus. On the processor itself that lines up with a triangle on the socket which helps with uh, identifying which way around it goes. You can also line it up off the notches. So it's, yeah, bolt this all back down and get some thermal paste applied, which I forgot to bring out with me, so I've got to go get it. <laughs> so I've done the one processor after going and getting my thermal compound. Yes, I'm an Arctic MX4 person. Um, I'm just using the P method, although the installation guide says to use a star method. I'm not going to do that. Um, with 3066, 2011, and I'd say, oops, 1155, go for about a pea size. 
1155, I mean 1151 now. Um, for the older 775 and 771, I would say go for about half a pea size because, yeah. Now this is very hard, I'm trying to film this and put a pea size blob on here. Well, that's about as much as I go, and then I just smear the side off there. Hopefully, I caught that on camera. Now, I need to get this heat sink on whilst ramming this cable down. It's a very odd place for them to run the uh, cable for the SAS. Now, how did I do this? I just flipped it over, trying not to press the bottom or get any gunk on the bottom. So. Just got to line it up on these standoffs. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go, and now it's just a case of tightening it down. Again, going in a countering uh, method. We can thankfully screw these in slightly like thumb screws. I doubt I'll be able to do this one because there's the chips in. Chip, 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 chip. God, English. Chip set heat sink in the way. But it should be enough to get them engaged. Yeah, that's engaged. And so is that one. Awesome. I'll tighten them down. Thanks to the handy dandy line on the motherboard, I realise I've stuck the one processor heatsink on backwards. Good job! There we go, all better. <laughs> God, that was a silly mistake. Anyway, now onto the RAM. The slots are colour coded. We have a blue, white, black, and it goes like that all the way in. So essentially, you start in the blue slot and you go blue, blue, blue white, 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 black, black, black. As you can see, I've only got one dim in the black slot, and seeing as I'm adding six new dims and I've got four missing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, totally remove the blacks, so that's this stick here, and this one here, the slightly paler ones, um, and shift all of them inward. So the ones that are currently in the white slots to the black slot, there the white to the black slots and the blue to the white slots. That way, because I know this memory configuration works and even if they are mismatched dims, they're working as they are, so I don't want to mess that up. So I'm just going to keep shifting them by one, it's going to keep them in their groups, and then I'm going to insert these 8 gig dims in the gaps. Looking at this RAM, I've discovered that there are two dims like this, they're Samsung, just like the rest of the memory, but they've got this Sun Verified Sun there, Sun Oracle Genuine Memory sticker on them. And there's only two of these, yet there are um, eight of these Samsung non labeled ones. And they all have this sticker that they come from Oracle as an upgrade kit. So instead of keeping these older ones about, I'm actually going to swap these in, in their place and essentially have all the matching memory. What is actual matching memory of this one? in its position. And hopefully I won't bugger anything up. Hopefully, he says. He says as the camera doesn't focus on anything. So after successfully moving all of this RAM over, it's time to install the 8 gig dims and hope that it will still work. And the memory configuration really does look a bit wonky. Uh, I do like these dims with the green heat sinks home. I think they would not look nice in actually a personal build rather than, but I know personal builds can't have them unless I'm using it, on, I'm not going to do that. So yeah, let's shut the lid back on, power it up and see if it's happy. Hopefully it is. Got to initialize this card. I know it's already uh, picked up the processors because it's actually shown, like the screen before this actually says that it's uh, got a processor count of 24, which is correct, well 24 threads anyway. So it should be about to go into the BIOS. Oh, there we go. So our processors, why does it say the speed's 2400 megahertz? That's odd. Is it limited? But whoa, look at that, 98 gigabytes of RAM. That's pretty flipping cool. Yeah, why does the speed say 2400? Is there a CPU configuration? Um, Hmm. Nothing in there. Unless it's in a C state. And I'll leave those enabled because, you know, I want the C states. Um, yes, oddly it says frequency 2.4. 
Ah. Is it running into a TDP limit and forcing it down? Huh. Good question. Let's have a look. I believe that is under... Oh, I'm not sure which it's under on this BIOS. Um... No, it's not under here. It might be under the MPS. I really don't know. Um, I have no idea where it is on this. Chipset, CPU configuration. No, uh, fridge. No, I, I know I've seen it somewhere. There is a setting for uh, power for pa like power limiting based on something. I, I apologize that I'm shaking this around a lot. It's because I'm trying to keep it focused whilst I'm not actually looking at it. It's not, why would it be interested computer? Come on. Um, God, jeez, where would it be? Yeah, I'm going to take a quick look around and see if it's in here. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, so this is just a um, Caproc CPU info in uh, Linux. And it picks up the CPU. Wow, my hand is yellow. <laughs> picks up the CPU correctly. But it also states that the CPU is running at 2.4 GHz rather than 2.67. I'm not entirely sure why that is. So... Anyway, I'm going to say CPU and RAM upgrade good, although weird. I guess I'm going to have to follow this up and uh, try and figure out why it's running at 2.4 rather than 2.6. Oh well. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And like and subscribe if you want to see more. So yeah, bye.